G'day. In today's video, I'm opening up the Gigabyte G5 laptop. With this, I want to add a NVMe SSD into it. But we'll also see what's upgradable and what's repairable while I'm there. Now, let's get into it. So to begin with, we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. And take the battery out. We use the little sliders here. Off the side, off the side. And if you can get a nail under there. Nope, I've put that into lock mode. I don't have enough of a nail to get that out. There we go. So let's get into it. One screw. I'm going to be curious to see if these screws are all the same size. See if they actually want to leave the plastic. My magnetic screw screwdriver is failing terribly. So this one's running a 10500H. And going by those two screws, they're not all going to be the same size. Running a 10500H. Uh, 10 i5 also running a RTX 3060 now I'm not actually sure which variant of 1060 it actually is so I guess I'll find out soon there is also two screws in here there is a third over here for the hinge but I don't believe that's going to be necessary just yet. There we go. There's probably going to be a warranty sticker under there. Another screw over here. And here, should be able to separate the back, the bottom from it. tool for that. Try my pry pick. Yep, this should work. Excellent. Go. Another screw out over here. So far, so good. There we go. And we are in. So, what can we see from here? It's strangely, a slightly disappointment amount of copper coolers. That's what I'm thinking. So I'll start with the boring stuff first. Where are we? Charger port. I'll zoom in here. There we go. So looking at the back here, we have one solder, uh, charger port soldered in, which looks very similar to an older Asus charger port, which I do find them quite repairable. The disappointing thing is you'd have to take the board out to be able to replace that. Ethernet, HDMI, display port, and working our way over. I'm not sure which one would be the GPU and the CPU. I'd probably guess over here would be the GPU, and over here would be the CPU. Purely going by size. Uh, what else we got going on here? We also have a replaceable wireless card over here. This particular one is an AX200NGW, which I believe is an Intel model as well. Now onwards to the more exciting stuff. So looking over here, we could put in a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive or SSD, depending on what you choose. Going over to here, we have, there we 
go. 8 gig of PC4, or PC, DDR4 3200. If I can get you guys in focus, sorry about that. There we go. Of Samsung. So upgrading the RAM is very straightforward. You would remove both sticks to put in two 16s. Should be able to slide in on a 45 degree angle and push down. Make sure the notch is here, there, down. Same with over here. There's no, and also, there's no need to disconnect the battery. As to get into the machine, we've already disconnected the battery. And from here, down. So we've got hard drive, 2.5 inch RAM, and over here we've got NVMe. So it looks like we have two available. So excellent. There should be a screw contained in the original packaging when you first bought the machine. So I'm going to install a one terabyte Kingston A200. No, Kingston A2000 SSD into here. And that will be used for benchmarking later on. The installation of this is very similar to the RAM. In, down, screw in. Very similar, not quite the same. I'm curious what the original brand So brand wise, I'm really not seeing a lot on here. The parts number isn't really standing out to me. Is anything in particular? I'm seeing a little underneath this chip. I'm curious what that says. Mm. Peel back the sticker. Hopefully it won't tear. I'm not sure if you guys can read that either. P-H-I-S-O-N. I can't say I've come across that brand, but looking over on the other side of it, I see a very familiar brand. Over here I see Kingston. Anyway, I'm gonna reinstall that back in there. Hmm. Odd placement. Not sure if that's to stop it flexing or the heat from the chips, just another way to transfer it out of there. Now, one thing I'm getting the feeling of with this is, even though it's a Gigabyte brand, I'm extremely confident to say that this would also be known as a Metabox, or a Clevo, or a Tong Fang chassis, which has purely been stamped with Gigabyte on there. Probably the biggest thing I don't actually like about here is essentially the false advertising. So, looking down here, we have Windforce exclusive cooling system. I'd almost be willing to bet if we were to open up a, a Clevo machine, we'd see this exact same cooling system as this does not look like any form of proprietary style of cooler for an exclusive cooler. Then we've pretty much only got two copper pipes going from here, one barely touching this GPU over here, and the two copper pipes going over here. The design of this is not really that unique. But anyway, I'm gonna get this back together and I'm gonna start downloading some games to benchmark. Since I've already tried out Doom Eternal and that is looking pretty darn good and playing pretty darn well. The biggest killer though has been the fan so far. The fan noise on this is pretty atrocious, especially going from a thin light to this, where during the whole install setup and installation process of just turning it on for the first time, the amount of fan noise it was producing was almost ridiculous. Uh, probably the biggest thing to be cautious of is where you put the longer screws, as the longer screws do go into the hinge. So the longer screw goes, goes here, the shorter screws go everywhere else. Now it's a matter of just putting them all back in. 
But anyway, that's how to open up your Gigabyte G5 or your potential Clevo laptop, which in the past I've had a Metabox laptop, which is also another brand that uses the same chassis. I had a Metabox Alpha 15, and it was very similar to this in design. So this may help for a few different models out there in the world. Anyway, I'm gonna figure out where the remainder of these screws need to go, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. Also, the battery in this is very small. So it reckons it's a 40, where are we? 48.96 watt hour battery. Being that it's only 14 centimeters, or close to six inches long, by about four inches, or four centimeters. 40 centimeters, sorry. And five centimeters at the bottom. It is a tiny battery, especially comparing it to a phone. Let's just another thing to notice.